بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to give advice to one another. Allah azza wa jal said, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ By time indeed mankind is at loss, except those who believe and do good deeds and advise one another to the truth and advise one another to patience. And bearing in mind this, or these ayat, and bearing in mind what the Prophet ﷺ told us when he said, الدين النصيحة We want to offer some important words of advice and to raise an issue that both myself and Ustad Abu Taymiyyah feel very, very uh, concerned about and we feel the need uh, as this issue has come up again and again and again to, to raise some points, inshallah, in this short video with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. And just before we start talking about the issue at hand, I just want to make a disclaimer that this video isn't being made in response to any one individual or any one incident. So I really want everyone to understand and take this disclaimer very seriously that this is not a video about a particular person or a particular event, but it's a video about a trend which has been observed among those people who have dedicated their time to calling people to Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether they're doing so that in the right way or the wrong way, but a trend that we've seen among people involved in da'wah and involved in calling to Islam, which is causing us really, really a huge amount of concern and which we feel that it wouldn't be right for us to remain silent on this issue. And in fact, we need to share some words of advice with the people. I think maybe we can explain this issue well by talking a little bit about the history. Hmm. So I think this started by a number of emails. And in the beginning, when you get an email complaining or, or raising an issue with someone, you know, you bear in mind what Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. Or you who believe when a, uh, a disobedient person, and this includes the anonymous person, comes to you with news, make sure of it. So you don't harm a people out of your ignorance and then become regretful over what you've done. So a number of emails started to come to me. I know you've also received communication regarding uh, a particular issue with those people who are in the public eye in terms of presenting Islam uh, to the world, whether it be on, on, online, whether it be in lectures, in person, in seminars, teachers, whatever, uh, as it relates to uh, their, you know, sort of a matter in their personal life mm -hmm. and the way that they deal or the way some of the relationships that they've got themselves involved in. Uh, you know, me personally, Wallahi, and without any exaggeration, it has really traumatized me. When a person that you know, okay, whether you agree with him or not, okay, he is there showing a face to the people. And then behind closed doors, uh, he's up to absolute madness. Something that would then, it wouldn't even cross your mind. Like, I, I, I've stopped eating. There's been days that have gone past, I stopped eating. Uh, I think it had an effect on my weight. Uh, I, I, I started having also like, some nights where I just barely couldn't sleep because I was getting flashbacks. You know, sometimes when you receive an email and it's just kalam, it's just speech, you don't tend to buy into that as uh, Ustad Muhammad Tamama just mentioned. All of these ayat, you know, of having husnul dhan and not to just believe everything that comes your way. Beware of, you know, assumptions and speculation. For indeed, the assumptions is the most fabricated type of narration. Okay, we have to kind of like apply these verses that we read and that we study. Okay, so that's the first thing. But when now screenshots, pictures, videos, videos of a person doing X, Y, and Z, things that you can't even imagine, and you start thinking, this is when really, you know, and it traumatized me. So what we're basically and, talking about, let's be yeah. clear, is we're talking about people involved in da'wah getting involved in what can broadly be termed al-fahisha. Yeah. And Im really, really immoral, immoral action. Disgusting. It's, uh, like, 
very disgusting. You know, everything through to uh, sending pictures of themselves in compromising positions. Not and just themselves, something like, you know, read you know, between the lines, you know? Uh, you know, to, to women, yeah. people ending up in relationships outside of marriage, people uh, who are, uh, you know, involved in all sorts of, you know, I mean, I've seen things that, wallahi, even... I wouldn't even have expected from some of the non-Muslims to be brutally honest with you. Mm. And these are things that, wallah, you wish your eyes could unsee them. But they are things that, and you know, in the beginning you think the screenshot is fabricated or the, but subhanAllah, it's just come time. Yeah. And it's not one person. If it was one person, we wouldn't be making a video. The whole purpose of us making this video is not because there's one or two or three, but there, this has now become an epidemic among people mm. giving da'wah that they have serious, serious, immoral, immoral actions that they are doing in the background and then the next day they're on the mimbar telling everyone, Ittaqullah, yeah. fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, we've had issues with revert sisters. We, and so many of these issues, we've chased them up and found out that, wallah, there is a problem. And the reason for making this video is not to attack the people who've fallen into it publicly mm. because those people, they, their, their matter has become known to everybody. But wallahi, I fear for the many, many people involved in da'wah who I personally know are still doing these things and they have yet for their matter to come out in public. And I haven't spoken to you guys about it. I've kept it, wallahi, between, between you and Allah and I don't want to expose it. There are names, there are people, there are situations. I don't want to talk about those. But I just want to give a nasiha to the brothers. Ya ikhwani, taqullah. Fear Allah Azza wa with regard to yourselves and with regard to the women and with regard to what you do in your private life. Because wallahi, there are things that if they came out, I fear that they would shake Islam's, you know, the, the people's following of Islam as a whole. And we've seen this with instances that have happened in the past and things that have come out. And the reason this video is being made is because we fear that there are many, many more people who have yet for their issue to come into the public eye. And there's a chance for them to repent and change their ways and correct themselves before this issue now becomes even bigger and wallahi i'm not frightened to mention the situation of the catholic church and what happened to them and the number of people wallahi who left that religion because they lost their faith in their clerics because their clerics were involved in pedophilia and in zina and in fahisha in every way and so they lost their faith in the entire concept of those people who are teaching them their religion and wallahi it's not far away to imagine that such a thing could happen to a certain extent with regard to some of the people who are teaching people islam that if this these issues now become public that are happening this exploitation of women on a massive scale this exploitation of women exploitation of revert sisters zina people sending pictures people taking part in web cam shows and filming themselves and filming their wives and sending it to other people wallahi if this issue comes out in the in the public domain among the number of people that we've seen it being affecting the fear is that wallahi people will stop trusting the people that teach them islam and this is such a huge amana wallahi uh, Ustad, um you, you know, because uh, I, I might not agree with you in a certain aspect, I'm talking about some of these brothers whose uh, screenshots and their information came to me. Uh, you know, we could have easily put people in the ground. Wallahi, just, just because I don't like the belief that you have and simply because it goes against the Quran. Yeah, if, if we wanted to make this personal, we could have most certainly done so. All the views, all the shares would have come on, on Facebook because people love gossip. We could have easily, easily turned this into a very personal thing. And, but because of the Sharia boundaries and also the bigger, uh, you know, how it could backfire on a more major scale against Al-Islam as a whole, we have kind of like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, withheld it. We've sought advice of, there, there's stuff I still haven't, you know, there's stuff where we have sat down on that until this very day, I kind of even feel a bit more shy to, uh, talk to my a friend of mine about it and we haven't shared names among each other either we haven't sat and said this person and this person and this person we haven't even among each other i don't even want to mention the names of the people i've seen to even uh, to the people who are dealing with the issue but it is it is a big problem and it's it's just so widespread and not just the people in front of the camera the people behind the camera as well the manager of the islamic center the people who are 
um, you know, like the guys who are doing, uh, you know, like the work in the background, the people who are involved in, you know, like for example, you know, the basic, you're sort of giving doubt, giving leaflets out to people. Wallah, there are some really, really big, big things happening. And I, wallah, I fear for, I fear that the, the harm will come back on the religion of Islam because of this. And I think we need to offer some words of advice to me about how people now, what they need to do, what concrete steps people need to take. They're involved in this tower field in whatever capacity, the cameraman to the person who brings the tea to the person who gives the lectures. What, what, do they, what steps do they need mm -hmm. to take? Uh, you know, uh, especially this is more for a public speaker or a social media because I, I feel like it is stemming off, you know, having social media accounts and through that communication takes place and it just gradually moves from step to step till the ultimate fahisha takes place. Okay, and we were discussing this the other day uh, um, when we were uh, having Asha. Uh, a social media platform that a person has accounts, Instagram, whether it might be Facebook, whether it might be Twitter, to have multiple people, uh, you know, on there monitoring it. Uh, so just in case you do slip, because in everybody's capacity to, you know, slip up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the plotting of the woman in the Azim. Their plotting are, is very great. And you know, you find some sisters, oh, they are there. Sometimes, you know, we're not oblivious about this. They are there to kind of seduce you in order to expose you to the public. Definitely. Allahu A'lam who sent them, but, you know, trying little moves in order to kind of, because at the end of the day, it's a fitna for the guy. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, ما تركت فتنة أضر على أمتي من النساء. I haven't left a fitna more greater upon my ummah than women. Not to say, okay, you know, to justify whatever he's done is right or to underplay. No, it is a serious fitna. But there is precautions, things that you could put in place in order to prevent things from taking place. So by having a number of people, your wives, family members, to just keep an eye on what you're sending, the communications that you're having. Okay, I think that's a uh, that's one you know, good place to start. I think it's important also for a person to have to revise their sincerity and their intention. Because wallahi, we're not in this field to get married. We're not in this field to get famous. We're not in this field to get wealthy. We're here to please Allah Azza wa Jal. And if that's the case, then we, the whole concept of, of your eye being looking out for your next potential spouse or whatever in your audience is wrong. Because that's not why you came to give that lecture. That's not why you came to do that dawah. It wasn't there so that you could go to, to, to find your next spouse or to find your next you know, uh, person you're going to get involved with or whatever. That's not what it was there for. So a person has to have personal limits. And I feel, you know, this is something that... And wallahi, I'm giving this advice. Wallahi, I'm giving it to myself before I give it to you. And I only give this advice because wallahi, I fear tomorrow it could be me. Wallahi, tomorrow it could be me. And I, I say that with all truthfulness. Because nobody, you know, أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ Allah. Do they think that they're safe from the plan of Allah? Nobody is safe from the plan of Allah. We don't know that it won't happen tomorrow to us. So one of the things that I think is very important is to have some personal limits, some things you won't do. I will not meet with a sister in private. Mm -hmm. I will not meet with a sister without asking her to bring her mahram. If she doesn't have a mahram, asking her to bring a reliable, older sister. Not to bring a sister who's this, you know, another 19-year-old like her, you need to sit in front of you. And and so you get double the fitna. And the hadith is, oh, ma khala rajal ma amra'ati illa kana thalithum al shaytan. Never does a man seclude himself with the except of the third person is the shaytan. the shaytan. And just having those things, like I don't give my phone number out to every person who comes. A sister comes and says, oh brother, you know, I've got these questions, I'm going through this problem. No problem. Set, for example, send me an email and my email is at least, you know, like there's a distance there. Or, you know, I have a system of following and, and I don't want to kind of, everyone can have their own way. But have some personal boundaries. Have some things that you will not do. You know, I will not be alone with a woman. I will not share my private details. I will not get into private one-to-one -one conversations where people are sending me videos and pictures and I'm sending them back videos and pictures. And so have some personal limits. Uh, have other people who watch over you. Wallahi, you know, I, one of the things I really appreciate is having other brothers to look over me and say to me, Ah, Muhammad, Tim, that time you didn't, you didn't follow your own rules. And I don't claim that I followed them all. And sometimes, subhanAllah, it happens to me. I fall into a mistake. But I want those other brothers who are watching just to say, Ah, you know, I think you didn't, you didn't quite follow your own rules there. You need to just be careful about that. And you guys know that, I, you know, for example, being involved in Rukia, these issues come up again and again. 
but just having those personal boundaries and having limits as to what you do. Looking at the way the shaitan is going to get you. Preparing where is the madkhal, how is the shaitan going to get me? The shaitan is going to get me through social media accounts. The shaitan is going to get me through WhatsApp. And then putting boundaries to stop that from happening. And that doesn't mean the shaitan is going to stop. He's going to keep on going. But at least it means that you are actively trying to stop it. And you haven't opened the door to everyone who comes. And as we said, many of the sisters who are, who are involved in this, they themselves have question marks over their behavior. But at the end of the day, who do we expect the high standard of behavior from? The da'iyah who is calling to Allah having memorized the Quran, having memorized a hadith, or the sister who's just new to Islam and she has issues at the yeah. end of the day. We expect a higher standard of character from those people who are giving da'wah. And we fear that the harm from this is going to come back against everyone. Mm. You know, it come, brings me back to that ayah. SubhanAllah, you know, taqu fitnatan la tusibanna ladheena zalamu minkum khasa. This is why I'm giving this video. Fear a trial that's going to come that is not just going to affect the guilty among you. It's going to affect the innocent people as well. People are going to stop listening to Islamic lectures. They're going to stop trusting in it. People are going to turn away from Islam. Brushing everybody with the same brush. Well, like I've all seen of this. And people are, are like leaving. That. People turning away from Islam. Revert sisters just walking out of Islam because of the way they've been trapped by the one person who was supposed to teach them good, who was supposed to be Mu'allim and Nas al Khair. Supposed to be the one that was teaching the people good. So Allah, this is, a, this is an issue that everyone needs to look at themselves. And myself first. Everyone needs to look at themselves. To look at the way they're dealing with it. To look at the people who are, you know, they're interacting with. To look at mistakes they've made in the past. And how to correct those issues and those mistakes. Uh, uh, and, uh, and also, you know, don't, I'm not saying that, you know, the da'iyah is infallible. Oh, he's not going to fall into mistake. Of course, yani, you know, sometimes people tend to get this twisted. They think that the da'ya, he can't get angry. He can't fall into mistake. No, it's going to happen. He's just like human, like error. But he has a bigger response than every uh, Dom, Dick and Harry, every Joe. Okay, that comes along. But the issue is you really need to constantly contemplate on your behavior. The self, whether before they went to sleep, they used to look out through the whole day. Okay, I done this. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. And he'd make toba. You know, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ If you've fallen into a mistake, then hasten to the maghfira, the, uh, the forgiveness of your Lord. I, SubhanAllah, I went to a sheikh, you know when this was getting, you know, very much, I went to a, uh, a sheikh in the haram, Sheikh Abdullah Zahim, who's a mufti inside the haram. I said to him, sheikh, we're having X, Y, and Z, and some of the things have been carrying on for years. Some of them uh, have been studying in Islamic universities, and now all of a sudden has happened and they've been exposed to the, uh, you know, the wider community. You know what the Sheikh said to me? And perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them because they didn't hasten to make in tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe because Allah wanted to have rahmah on them to expose them now so he doesn't, and, and punish them now so he doesn't punish them later. When uh, uh, maybe because, you know, he was oblivious, he kept on carrying on, kept on carrying on, kept on carrying on. Allah gives you a chance. You know, sometimes Allah doesn't just come and wipe you off the floor. He gives you a chance. And maybe because you didn't take that chance. This is the problem with a lot of people. Yes, you make, you fall into mistake. Uh, Allah, the Hadith Khudsi, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Hadith Al-Khudsi? Uh, you make mistakes day and night. This is something that is universally going to happen. But that which most people don't do is, Seek my forgiveness so I can forgive you. You know, if you fall into mistake, hasten. You're gonna fall into mistake. You know, generally as well, one thing I wanted to raise on this is people being happy with other people's flaws. Who is it that hears about his brother falling into a sin and he gets happy? Well, like, even if they're from Ahl Bid'ah, even if they're from the people of innovation, what kind of heart is that person that they get excited? Let me share it on social media. Look, you know, somebody has committed a major sin. Let's all get, you know. Wow. Sheikh Suleiman, the exact point he mentioned in Haram, the exact same point, you know. I feel it's a very, it's a, it's a sickness of the heart. And wallah, whoever I've heard and seen this about, and I haven't made an effort to check people, but all I know is that I'm not interested in your personal life. What I'm interested in is this being a problem which is affecting lots of people. It's not affecting one person. Like we said, if it's one person, I'm gonna go grab the brother privately and say, Akhi, do me a favor, let's just have a chat. But the fact is, it's not, this is not a one person issue. This has now become, a, a big, big thing which is Muntashir. It's spread out across the whole community of people giving da'wah, whether they're people giving da'wah to the Sunnah or giving da'wah to their desires and their whims. 
it's affecting everybody and it's in very a big danger of becoming this fitna that affects the innocent as well as the guilty so you know for me i think we, we're not we're not happy to have to say that and we're not interested in exposing people's private issues yeah. it's not about that it's about telling people look while allah has concealed something for you you have a chance to make a change you have a chance to correct the situation and to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem and save yourself the embarrassment of us you know coming and confronting you <coughs> seeing you down showing you some disgusting things that you've been doing which could easily be done you know we could easily call you sit you down it's an embarrassment for yourself uh, we, uh, brothers and sisters we don't want you to think at any point we, this is an enjoyment Wallahi, Allah knows best how many times we went back and forth. No, we shouldn't do this. No, we should do this. Until another brother who's a PhD can said, No, Abu Taymi, you have to do it. We actually believe in these hadith. Man satara aib muslimin, satarahu Allah yawm al qiyamah. Whoever conceals the sins of a Muslim, then Allah will conceal his sins in the, in the hereafter. It's, it's not easy like, to be able to sit here and to talk about something like this. It required a lot of thought. And even more so when it comes to someone spreading misguidance in regards to religion. This is just affecting a couple of people. But that is affecting a larger scale of people. And it's more like, you know, the nusr, the fact that you have the care over the people. I get accused of this sometimes. Why are you mentioning his name? Guys, it's not because we want to mention his name. People are getting, you know, deviated. People are getting the wrong impression of Islam. It's causing them to have an effect, uh, you know, on, on a bigger scale. You know, uh, I, I think, think we, that's all, yeah. I think we can conclude with that. Yeah. Uh, conclude with some parting words of advice. So I advise myself, first of all, and then I advise my brothers and my sisters in Islam to fear Allah with regard to themselves, with regard to their interaction with the opposite gender, with regard to what they do in private and what they do in public, with regard to all the issues that we've talked about. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to conceal our faults and to conceal your faults. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct us and to correct you. Uh, and we, we hope that this advice will have woken up some people who maybe were sleeping uh, and maybe made them just think about the situation that they're in. Uh, and maybe you know, we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us with this being a means to stop this from getting worse and from becoming even, even more problematic than it is. And it, there's always a way to change for everyone. For every single one of you, there's a way. If someone is involved in something, there's a way they can rectify that. And if they rectify it sincerely for Allah, I hope and I pray that Allah Azza wa conceals everything that happened from them. And they know from me that I will not be the one to remove that concealment, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. But this is a general advice to all of the people involved in calling to Allah Azza wa to let you know that this is an issue and it is getting worse and to give a warning before it becomes something that you can't change and you can't roll the clock back on. Uh, analyze our job so if, if, if a brother is watching who is in the da'wah scene active giving da'wah to the people and you're listening to this video brother do not think that this uh, this video is not about you you're meant to be taking heed from this nobody's mentioning a name it's a general advice but don't think oh no he must not have my information we're living in the 21st century where it takes one button to be pressed for emails and information to be sent Sometimes brothers feel, or sisters, they feel like, oh, I can speak to this guy because I feel like he's going to do something about it. Like, uh, half of the people, we're not even in interaction with them, but people think, okay, me sending it to this guy is going to do something about it. Don't just like, uh, you know, brush it under the carpet and think, uh, you know, about, okay, he's it's, it's maybe speaking about me to kind of like change this uh, thing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does bring it out. You know, and Allah knows best, inshallah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك جاء جاء من anything else today سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهدوا أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك